Hey, it's Sam from Sugar Spun Run, and today I'm sharing a good old fashioned classic shortbread cookie recipe. Shortbread cookies are super understated and simple, but they're so tender and buttery and they just melt in your mouth. I think you are going to love them. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get started. You'll want to grab yourself a large mixing bowl. And to this, we are going to add one cup of softened unsalted butter. Now, shortbread uses very few ingredients. So the quality of your ingredients really matters here more than it might in some other cookie recipes. Because of that, I like to splurge for European style butter for this recipe. You do not have to. I've made it plenty of times just with just regular American butter, but European butter has a higher percentage of fat in it and a lower percentage of water. This is going to make our cookies even more buttery and even more tender and even more melt in your mouth. Now, if you have a stand mixer, you could absolutely make your recipe in that, but today I'm just going to be using my electric hand mixer. I'm going to beat the butter until it's light and creamy. This will just take about a minute. All right, the next thing we're going to add is our powdered sugar. This recipe uses three fourths cup of powdered sugar and we'll add this in and stir it until it's completely combined with the butter. Now, if you've been following along for a while, you may know I actually have a different shortbread recipe I shared, I wanna say like five years ago. That one just used granulated sugar instead. It's still a great recipe. I am going to leave the video up. I'll even leave a link to the original recipe over there. But over time, I kind of felt like that one was a little bit more like a sugar cookie and I wanted something a little more like a true shortbread. So here we are with powdered sugar and cornstarch, which we'll get to in a bit. All right, let's stir in this sugar. And once that's completely combined, we'll add our vanilla extract. So traditional, the very original shortbread does not use vanilla extract. You can leave it out if you want, but I don't know why you would because it really adds a nice flavor. We are going to add one teaspoon. Looks like I got out the half teaspoon, so we'll just do two of these. One teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now, if you'd like, you could substitute vanilla bean paste instead, which really does add a nice lovely flavor to the shortbread and it puts those nice little vanilla bean specks throughout the dough as well. We'll stir in the vanilla. All right, let's slide this out of the way for just a minute. We'll grab a separate bowl for our dry ingredients. The first thing you'll need is two cups or 250 grams of all purpose flour. I really love using a kitchen scale. We recommend you do the same. I do all of my recipe testing with weights rather than with cups and all weight measurements are included in the description. Using weights is one of the easiest way to up your baking game because you will be using exact amounts. Whereas with cups, it's kind of more like a rough guess and it's very easy to accidentally mismeasure your ingredients. Next thing we'll add is two tablespoons of cornstarch. Now there's already cornstarch in the powdered sugar, but we are going to increase the amount or the ratio of cornstarch because this is also another contributing factor to the tenderness of the cookie. And it also helps keep the cookies from spreading in the oven. Finally, we'll add a half teaspoon of salt. And this is just plain table salt that we're using today. We're done with our scale, so We can slide that out of the way, mix these ingredients together. And let's bring back our butter over here. And we'll gradually add the flour mixture to our butter mixture. This dough will be pretty dry once everything's combined. So I do recommend adding the flour gradually. That way the liquid ingredients, you know, the butter and the sugar have time to absorb the flour. If you add it all at once, you're going to have a very stiff, crumbly dough. It's not going to come together. You're going to leave me a comment asking why your dough is so dry. That can also happen if you use measuring cups and you don't weigh your flour. So those are just a couple of tips to help you get a flawless shortbread cookie dough. Let's grab a spatula now and we'll scrape the sides and bottom of the bowl. I want to make sure there are no streaks of flour hiding. And now we'll grab some plastic wrap because we are going to need to chill this dough. So I'll just drop this right on plastic wrap. All of that dough, we don't wanna leave any of that behind. And we are going to form this into a disc. 
Now you could divide it into two parts and have two discs. That would also work just fine. I'm just going to be working with one today. Sorry, it was gonna squeeze out the edges. So I'll form this into a disc. I do like to round the edges just a bit. That way they're less likely to crack when I roll it out. And this is going to need to chill in the refrigerator for a minimum of one hour, but you could also prepare it and let it sit in the fridge for up to five days before you roll it out. Note that if you leave it in the fridge that long or even longer than a couple of hours, it will probably need to sit at room temperature for 10, 20 minutes, maybe even a little bit longer before it will easily roll for you. When you're about ready to roll out your dough, you're going to want to go ahead and get your oven preheating to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Also make sure your rack is in the center of the oven because that's the one we're going to be using to bake our cookies. Now I'm going to just lightly flour my surface. I have a clean countertop here. Just dust it with some flour and I'll turn my dough out into that. Brush a little bit of flour on top. And we'll use a rolling pin to roll this out to the desired thickness. Now I say desired thickness because it can really be whatever you want it to be. I recommend rolling your cookies out to be between 1 8 and 1 4 inch thick. I like mine a little thicker, so I'm a little closer to the 1 4 inch thick mark. Now periodically as you're rolling out your dough, you're going to want to check and make sure it's not sticking. If at any point it is sticking, just grab a thin spatula and scrape between the cookie dough and the counter. If it's sticking, just dust a little more flour under there and just periodically check like that. I think I threw some flour behind me right there. Maybe the dog will get it. Now, if you're struggling with your dough cracking too much while you're trying to roll it, it's probably just too cold. Let it sit for a couple of minutes and then try it again. When I say a couple minutes, you're probably going to need to give it at least 10 minutes. All right, we'll do one final sweep underneath. That way our cookies don't stick when we go to cut them out. And it looks like I have an assistant who wants to help, so give me one second. So Luke here has our cookie cutter. There are a lot of ways you can do shortbread. Some people like to make a wedge and cut it. Some people like to keep or form the dough into like a rectangle and cut slices. I like to roll it out and use a cookie cutter. I am going to be using a two inch cookie cutter. I think it just makes nice sized cookies. We're going to be making hearts today, right Luke? Tell the camera what shape we're using. So I have a baking sheet that I prepped here. I've lined mine with parchment. I love using parchment, it makes for easier cleanup. But if you don't have parchment, you'll just place your cookies directly on an ungreased baking sheet. Okay, Luke, do you wanna do the first cut? Yep. Go ahead. Good, thanks. I'm gonna do a couple more. Now, when you're making your cuts, anytime you're doing a cookie like this, keep them close together. That way you don't have to regroup the dough. So we did our first cut out. Do you wanna do more? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. You do them and I'll cut them out. I have a feeling we're going to be doing a little more regrouping than I usually would, but another nice thing about these cookies is they're a lot of fun for making with kids. You're doing a great job. Now, when you're spacing the cookies on your baking sheet, you should space them still about an inch and a half apart at least. They should not be spreading at all in the oven, but you do wanna give them a little room to breathe. All right, I have a full tray though, so I'm going to put these in the oven. These are going to bake in the center rack, 350 oven for about nine to 11 yeah. minutes. What? Oh, that's cute. I think we can fit it on here. There you go. Okay. Make sure we give them enough space. A good way to tell that the cookies are done baking is the edges may be beginning to turn a very, very light golden brown. You don't want them to get too dark, otherwise they become a little bit too crumbly and dry. We want them to be really tender and melt in your mouth. Okay, I'm putting them in the oven, okay? Okay. And then you can eat one of these, is that good? Yeah. Okay. And then don't forget all of your scraps, you're just going to regroup them together and re-roll them out to get as many cookies as possible. If your dough gets too warm and difficult to work with, just pop it back in the fridge for like 15 minutes or as long as you need to, to get it manageable again. All right, so when the cookies are finished baking, we're going to let them cool for at least five minutes on the baking sheet before you remove them to a cooling rack to cool completely. 
So shortbread is great as is. You can enjoy it the traditional way, just like that if you'd like. However, I'm a little extra with my desserts, so I like to add some chocolate. I've melted about a cup of semi-sweet chocolate. Actually, I think this is like 60% dark chocolate, and I'm just going to dip my cookies in the chocolate. You can see I put this cooling rack over wax paper so it'll catch any drips. I just hold the cookie. Now this cookie has cooled completely. Don't try to do this while they're warm or they'll break on you. And then just gently dip the cookie. Let the excess drain off for a second. And then I'll let the chocolate harden on the cooling rack. Luke also prefers the cookies dipped in chocolate and I have a feeling he will be making a reappearance when it's time to try them. Okay, my chocolate has not re-solidified yet. Obviously, it's only been a couple of seconds, but that is how easy it is to make shortbread cookies at home. It really is a simple recipe. Even a three, almost four-year-old can do it. I really hope you enjoy today's recipe. If you have tried my old one, I'd like to know what you think of this one in comparison. If you tried this one at all, let me know what you think. I always love hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Okay, Luke, the chocolate is still wet. Are you sure you wanna try it now? Yeah. You don't wanna wait? No. Okay, pick your favorite one. I don't think I want to wait either. That one? Good choice. Do you want cheers? Let's try them. Mm. Does it get a thumbs up? Can you go on my website? Mm -hmm. Oh good, okay, thank you. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get to get it manageable. <laughs> hey kiddo, do you want to help me with the cutouts? You'll be right there waiting, okay. Looks like Bray is waiting too. It's boring. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>